In this video, we compile a series of life-changing talks from Sadhguru that can revolutionize your life. So without further ado, let's hear our favorite Sadhguru. If you come to terms with your mortality, security, insecurity, all these things will go. You are living on a daily basis as if you are forever. The fundamental awareness that this is mortal, this is here only for a limited amount of time. If this was a regu you know, a normal conscious thing for you, you would put your life to best use for sure. And if you come to terms with that one thing, there would be no insecurity because there's nothing to gain, nothing to lose in this life. You came with nothing, whatever the hell is happening, you're on the profit side, yes or no? Did you come with investment? No, you come with nothing, so whatever the hell is happening, you're always on the profit side, isn't it? And anyway, they don't allow you to take a container in the end, so all you have is how profound, intense and beautiful is your experience of life. So don't make too much fuss about it. You are acting as if you're going to lose something. No, there's nothing to lose, nothing to gain because you come and you go. You may think, oh, my life, my life. No, it's your… your life on this planet is like a pop-up. On the computer screen, you've seen these pop-ups. You just a pop-up and pop-out. In the meantime, will you rise and shine is the only question, all right? So if anyway you shine, sometimes you may be seen by people, Sometimes you may not be seen by people. The important is you are shining within yourself and that's all that matters. If people have eyes, they will see it. If they have no eyes, they won't see it. That's their problem. But you are living an intense and profound life. That's all that matters here. If you understand this and if you bring this into your life, insecurity will not happen because security can happen only in death. Yes or no? People keep asking me, coming to me and asking me, Sadhguru, please bless us, nothing should happen to us. I say, hey, what kind of blessing is this? My blessing is let everything happen to you. Everything that's life must happen to you. Have you come here to avoid life or have you come here to experience life? Please, you must make a decision right now. Have you come here to avoid life or to experience life? Experience life all the different dimensions of what this life holds must happen to you, isn't it so? If you come to avoid life, there's an ocean right here, you can jump into the ocean. See, if you want to avoid life, you must die. It's a more efficient way of doing things, isn't it? You're alive and you try to avoid life, it'll become miserable. If you feel insecure, that's what you will do. You will try to avoid life. When you're alive and try to avoid life, it'll cause immense misery. When you're alive, you live. The most important thing is to work upon yourself. What does it mean by saying working upon yourself physically? Just set up small goals for yourself for the next few weeks that are there. Suppose you were eighteen for the last thirty years. When the first time when you became eighteen, if you did bend down, how far would you go? At that time maybe it went all, all the way to the floor, today maybe it's like this. Just see if you can go six inches more. When you were eighteen years of age, how quickly you went up a staircase. Today how you're plodding up the staircase, see if you can improve it by ten, twenty percent. Twenty percent improvement in the next two weeks. Just uh, check your picture when you were eighteen or below, how you would stand, how straight you were. And now if you become like this, straighten yourself up a little bit. Look further back, what kind of smile you had when you were six, eight, ten years of age. See if you can get fifty percent of that back on your face all the time, not by simply grinning a plastic smile, but bring that magic back into you. If you cannot do anything fantastic, at least you must be a pleasant piece of life on this planet. This is something that you owe to yourself and to everybody who lives around you. This you must do, so set up your own kind of goals and see 
It's not difficult, I'm telling you, just needs little attention. Right now, people think they're carrying the world on their head. No, no, just in case you are in Shirasasan right now and you take a picture and turn it around, it looks like you're carrying the planet on your head, but that's not the truth. Whether you are, you are on your feet or on your head, planet is carrying you and it's spinning by itself. Day and night is happening by itself, seasons are changing by itself, sun comes and goes by itself. Really, there's nothing to do. These two weeks are for time for you to realize everything that is significant in the universe is happening by itself. It's for you to sit here and enjoy the bounty of life. Just make use of this. Do not act like you are running the whole planet or you are running the whole universe for that matter. You are not. It is happening by itself. You are a tiny little creature who is here for a little bit of time. Don't make so much fuss about it. To handle a few years of life, do not make such a big fuss. These few weeks you must come out as a more pleasant and wonderful human being. This is the greatest thing you can do to yourself. If you sit here, this person is a pleasant experience for you. If you are a pleasant experience for yourself, Everybody else will also experience this person as a pleasant experience. What great things you will do or not do, that is subject to various realities. Nobody can fix it hundred percent. You must understand, our actions are largely determined by the times in which we exist. Suppose you were here five thousand years ago. Five thousand years ago if you were here and this the virus came to you, you didn't have to do any social distancing because anyway there was nobody around you. Even if you wanted to infect, you couldn't find a person. So you need to understand what we are doing, our actions and what we do and do not do is the times in which we exist. If you are here five thousand years ago, you would not be writing software, you would be doing something else. You would not be doing all the things that you're doing today. Don't think you are doing it, it is the times. In the times, the times that we are in has its own weather, some smooth weather, some rough weather. If you learn to ride this weather gracefully, then people say you're a success. If you create a problem about every little fluctuation that happens, then you become a failure in your life. If you were a wave surfer, you've seen people surfing on the waves. What is his dream? He would like to have a tsunami. The dream in a surfer's mind is a tsunami, a hundred foot tall wave riding it. That would be the dream. If you know how to ride it, even the tsunami is a wonderful thing. So right now, virus, it is not going by itself. It is not flying by itself and getting you, it needs us to get somewhere. It's for us to decide whether it goes somewhere or it doesn't go somewhere. It's our business to see that it doesn't go anywhere, it should not come to you. In case it did happen that it come to you, you must ensure it does not go to anybody else, one hundred percent. Because this is the time to show who you are as a generation of people. This is a generational issue because no more it's a national issue, this is not an issue of a caste, creed, religion, no, or race. Virus is quite very even-handed. It doesn't matter what's your race, what's your religion, what's your caste or creed, indiscriminately it is going to people. Initially people thought it'll only get the Chinese. Well, now everybody is realizing virus is not just interested in Chinese people, it is okay with anybody, quite indiscriminate. So this is a generational challenge. In these challenging times, will you ride this wave successfully or will you be crushed by this? can only be determined by how responsibly you respond to this whole thing, with how much sense or will we do something senseless and make this into a massive disaster. Right now in India and in most parts of the world, except unfortunately in a few countries, a lot of people don't understand what is a threshold anymore. If you go to an Indian temple, there will be one foot high threshold, will be little wide. If you're not physically fit, you will little struggle over that. But those who are fit very effortlessly, they will cross this threshold and go. Right now it's only a threshold to cross, but if we feed it with irresponsibility, this threshold has the potential to become a huge mountain that we cannot cross. It needs responsible behavior and responsible action. What does responsible mean? Normally, most human beings are in a state of compulsive reaction. Responsible action means you consciously respond. You consciously respond to what is in front of you, not compulsively behave, saying that this is the way I will do things. Conscious response. Thanks.
because responsibility means it's just your ability to respond. This is the most important thing in your life that you have retained your ability to respond to whatever comes our way because what comes our way is not determined by us. To some extent, we can decide what comes our way. Largely what comes our way is not determined by us, the world decides. But whatever comes our way, what we make out of it is one hundred percent ours. This is the time to show who we are, what are we made of. Are we human beings or are we just one more compulsive instinctive creature? This is what is being tested right now for you. This is an evolutionary test for you. See, it is not only for a monkey that some itch in the body may happen. Even for you it happens. If it happens, you handle it. Lot of people are there, you don't do anything. When people are not there, you do it like this. This is conscious response. This is an evolutionary test for you. You have to prove that you have become a human being. Human being means one who knows how to be. This is a time for you to show you know how to be. But people are cooped up together for long hours. People who you claimed that you love immensely, seven days getting very difficult for a lot of people. You must address this also. Why has it become so difficult? Why is it so difficult to be with people? Simply because we have formed strong opinions and ideas about everybody, including ourselves. This is an important thing that you have to do if you have to live here as a conscious human being. That is, you have no opinions of any sort. Strong opinions means you have concluded about everything in the world. There's nothing to live here for. When you have made conclusions about everybody and everything, including yourself, this means you have destroyed all possibilities of life. Life is a possibility. But between the possibility and reality, there is a distance. In your life, will you walk the distance or not? Do you have the courage and the commitment to walk the distance or no? This is all the question is about your life. I hope you answer this question positively because you can address this in so many ways. This happened. After the singing disaster, I'm saying after the classical music concert happened in Shankaran Pillai's home, she gave up classical music because of the comment that he gave. Then after three days, first three days classical music, next three days nothing to do, so she spent some time in front of the mirror, she looked at herself, when she got married, how she looked and today how she's looking. Because of the planetary influence, she was taking the shape of the globe. So she stood in front of the mirror in the bedroom. Shankaran Pillai was sitting on the bed reading something. She said, you know, how I have become, how I used to be. Every year my size is going up, clothing size. I'm looking ugly, look at my face, everything is sagging, my complexion is gone, I have bags under my eyes. This damn planet, it could have been slim. Shankaran Pillai just kept reading. Said, please say something, say something nice. Say something that's good about me, I'm completely depressed looking at myself in the mirror. Say something nice, something that's good about me. Shankaran Pillai looked up and said, well, your vision is perfect, something is good about you. So this is not a time to go about picking faults in each other or even in yourself. You just see how every week you can be at least ten percent better, physically ten percent better, mentally ten percent better, emotionally ten percent better, behavior-wise ten percent better, relationship-wise ten percent better. One week, ten percent, thirty percent increase in everything, you will be quite a fantastic human being, believe me. See, uh, this is an unfortunate condition that a whole lot of human beings are in. In their personal experience, life is like me versus the universe. Being in competition with the universe is a stupid thing to do. That's not a competition you must get into. Hello? So, this is why yoga… Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body. The word yoga means union. Right now it's me versus the universe. This is just your psychological condition, this is not the reality. Even when you feel utterly lonely, are you still breathing? So you're transacting with the world, isn't it? Yes? You only can't get along with the people around you, but atmosphere is okay with you, food is okay if it tastes good, water is okay. You have transaction with the world, isn't it? Your existence is constantly an engagement with the universe, but your mind becomes against the universe. If you create a psychological condition that you're against or you're in competition with the universe or the cosmos, obviously you will feel crushed for small things. Little things will crush you. 
when I say little things, maybe you failed your examination, maybe you got thrown out of this university, maybe you got fired from a job, maybe somebody ditched you, maybe something else like this happened. These are all small things between life and death because you came here with nothing, isn't it? When you die, there is no container service for you. You die with nothing. In spite of that, most people are carrying such a huge baggage on their head as if they are carrying the whole universe on their head. This is their own psychological condition. When are you going to figure out how to handle your thought and emotion? Not hers, not hers, not his, yours. When are you going to learn how to handle my thought and my emotion at the end of your life? The only problem really with life is just this. Most human beings have taken themselves too seriously. They don't understand. You've seen on the computer screen these pop-ups? You are a pop-up on this planet. You pop up for two seconds and pop out. No, no, you must see, countless number of people like you and me have walked this planet. Oh, they were also big people. Where are they? All topsoil? Unless they… somebody, your friends decide to bury you real deep, fearing that you may raise from the dead. Or maybe you're planning to go to heaven. Hello? Anybody who talks about a place other than this place, has a better place than this, this is a crime against humanity. My fundamental work is to destroy all heavens so that people will learn to live well here. All these idiots who made a hell out of themselves, they want to go to heaven. They made a mess out of this place and then they want to go to heaven. I am asking you, do you have any proof? Do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and messing it up? You are already in heaven making a mess out of it, yes? Simply because you are not even learning how to handle your basic faculties of thought and emotion, isn't it? Your only justification is, everybody is like this only, that's how it is in a madhouse. So when are you going to handle it? Slowly, at the age of sixty? I'm asking, when will you learn how to handle my thought, how to handle my emotion, how to handle my body, how to handle my chemistry, when are you going to figure this? At the end of your life, because this culture has grown, when to do spirituality means when you're seventy, when you're no good for anything else. No, at the earliest possible time, whatever is most profound about you, not about heavens, about this life, everything that you need to know, you must know soonest, isn't it? Only then you live a sensible life. I want you to understand you are not suffering your life, you're only suffering two fantastic faculties. One is, we have a vi vivid sense of memory. This is because of this memory our life is so rich, unlike any other creature. And we have a fantastic sense of imagination. Now, this is what you're suffering. What happened ten years ago, you can still suffer. Why? Are you suffering life or memory? Hello? Memory. Memory. What may happen day after tomorrow, you're already suffering. E are you suffering life or imagination? imagination? Two most fantastic faculties you have, you're suffering. So what are you asking for? You want to become once again an earthworm. An earthworm is a very eco-friendly creature, I have nothing against it. But it took millions of years of evolution to get you at this size of brain and now you're suffering it. If we take away half your brain, of course, you will sit there without any anxiety, without any suffering, peacefully. What we need is we need to remove your brain because you are suffering your own intelligence. Yes or no? Because we gave you a very complex machine, you have not bothered to read even the user's manual. You want to just blunder around. No, young people, it's time you figure out a few things about you. If you don't know how, we will give you tools how to figure this machine out because in your life many issues will come. More issues come up in your life means you're living a more active life. Nothing came up means you're not living, yes? Lots of issues every day. This one thing you must fix, that is, in your life you are not the issue. 
okay? Whatever the issue, we'll do our best, but this should not be the issue. The important thing is, at this stage in your life, you just focus on enhancing this life. Don't worry about what it will yield. You should not worry about what this life is going to yield. What it yields depends on times in which we are, many other aspects of life. But if this is an enhanced life, it will yield something worthwhile. Doesn't matter what it yields, who knows? Maybe you won't become an artist, maybe you will become an engineer, maybe you will become a doctor, maybe you will become something else, who the hell cares? As long as you enhance this life, something worthwhile will come out of it. What will happen in the end? What will happen in the end? The same thing. See, when I don't know what is future, that's a very insightful statement because nobody knows what is the future. Do you know what's going to happen in the next five minutes? No. No, Sadhguru, my astrologer, well, does your astrologer know what is going to happen in the next ten minutes of his life? Does he know? No. He does not know ten minutes of his life, but he knows your entire life. It's a fantastic thing, you know. So, you don't know future, isn't that a great thing, fortunately? Suppose you know your entire future, would you not want to commit suicide right now? Huh? Isn't it wonderful that in spite of all your brains, you can't figure what is next moment? Hello? Isn't it wonderful? Have you ever seen a suspense thriller movie? Have you? See, right now there's a very wonderful, wonderful suspense thriller in the local theater. None of you have seen it. I have seen it. Shall I tell you the story? Yes. <laughs> okay, the whole story is going to take too much time, so I'll just tell you the last suspense part of it, okay? <laughs> Shall I? No. Why? Because suspense means like this, you go and see the poster, oh, this guy's… I think he's going to do this, that guy's going to do that. Oh, this director, most probably this how it's going to go. Then you go inside, see all those still images, then you say, definitely this guy is going to do this, that guy is going to do this, all kinds of projections. You go and sit in the auditorium, first few scenes and said, this is it, he's going to do this, but he did something different. Then you said, he's going to do that and he did something different. You said, this is going to happen and something else happened. Halfway down the movie, you discuss with your friend, last scene is definitely like this. When the last scene came, something totally different happened. Then you come out and say, wow, what a wonderful movie, yes? You went there, sat, you saw the first scene and you said, this is what is going to happen and that's what happened in the last scene, as it happens in most movies. Then you come out and said, this is no good, isn't it? So essentially what you're saying is, if all your predictions go wrong, it's wonderful. If all your predictions come true, it's no good. Then I'm asking, what's wrong with your life? Your life is fantastic. You can predict whatever, it all goes wrong, goes wrong, goes wrong. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Only problem is, you lost your ability to enjoy the suspense, that's your only problem. Yes? You want to know the end, you're a match fixer. <laughs> yes, you're a match fixer. You want to know the end before you play the game, match fixer or no? Today it's a crime in this country, match fixing, you know. <laughs> so don't try to match fix your life. Let's see what the hell happens, huh? <laughs> Whatever happens, you came here with nothing, you'll go with nothing, so what the hell? The only thing is, did you make your life's experience profound enough, intense enough, that's all there is.
What's there to happen? So what will happen tomorrow? What will happen tomorrow? I'll give you a simple thing. The best thing about life is tomorrow never happens. Yes? If you just know how to deal with what's now, you know how to deal with your entire life. This moment if you know how to manage your thought, your emotion and your body, rest, drama outside happens. But if this is like this, this will be joyful and wonderful no matter what's the drama around you. Yes? Oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Yes, all those things can happen. But you came here to experience life, not to avoid life, isn't it? Are we sure? Are we sure? You want to right now go into the museum? No, no, no. Oh, you're misunderstanding my question, you're art students <laughs> No, no, I'm not asking you to go for a visit in the museum, I'm… as an artifact, do you want to go into the museum right now yourself? No, this is the time to live. To live means you don't know what the hell is tomorrow, anything. Either you must be excited about it or you can be fearful about it. You are fearful about it because you already fixed what should happen. You are afraid what you think may not happen. But first of all, I'm asking you, why are you thinking what should happen? If you are dedicated to the process, Depending upon what process we are doing, accordingly life will unfold tomorrow. Yes? There are many dimensions to it. If you explore all of it, if you just explore your biology, life will happen one way. In the sense, if you take charge of your physical self, your body, fifteen to twenty percent of your life and destiny will happen the way you want it. If you take charge of your mind, your thought and emotion, fifty to sixty percent of your life and destiny will happen the way you want it. If you take charge of your life energies, one hundred percent of your life and destiny will happen the way you want it. This is a choice you have. Don't create the expectations, there'll be no dejections. Before you start your life, you must spend some time learning something about this machine, isn't it? This body, this mind, how to use it, in what way it operates best. Shouldn't we spend some time? No, you just jump into life and as I create expectations and I get dejected, obviously unrealistic, isn't it? Oh, if I don't create expectations, maybe I won't do nothing. That's not true. Anyway, you're doing something, isn't it? If you can look upon everything around you the same way, Everything that you can do, you'll do. What you cannot do, you'll not do. What's the problem? That's how the whole existence is functioning, isn't it so? If you ask this planet to spin backwards, can it do it? So even Mother Earth cannot do, so what's the big deal? You are just a piece. So what's the big deal? You can only do what you can do. So once you see this, your whole life will be focused on how to enhance your ability to do, not waste your time and silly expectations. Life will happen the way it happens, not because you desire, it happens because you're enabled in a certain way. Instead of enabling yourself, you're wasting your time in silly expectations of yourself. So, instead of spending your time building fancy expectations, spend your time to enable this one. What you're capable, that's all you will do, isn't it? Can you do something more? Can anybody do something more than what they're capable of? No. It is just that your capability can be stretched. Without stretching your ability to do, you're building expectations. It is just fundamentally wrong, isn't it? Now I want to run hundred meters in seven seconds. <laughs> you shouldn't think of this. You should just work on your legs and your lungs and just run. Maybe, <laughs> who knows, you'll run it in six seconds, who knows? You build your legs into as powerful a condition as you can build it and just run, just for the simple joy of it. So, uh, don't waste your life 
in setting up expectations because these expectations are not even yours. You're looking at your neighbor and setting expectations for yourself. It's a very, very silly way of building your life because your expectations are not even yours, isn't it? I'm telling you, human mind is such, let's say in Mumbai everybody had only one leg. You had actually two, but everybody has only one. They're all hopping around. You will also do that, though you have to, because you're setting up your expectations, looking at people around you. So, there's no need for any expectations. Just enable yourself, whatever the situation allows will do. Just, oh, this is all you have to do. Build your body and your mind in such a way that you can use it to the fullest capability. So whatever kind of situations arise in front of you, accordingly you act, not the fancy way you like. You know, right now, we have started a whole different form of education in Asia called Samskriti. They have no formal education. They're just learning yoga, classical music, classical dance, Sanskrit language, English language and martial arts, nothing else. These kids know nothing, but you come and see them <laughs> absolutely like this because we're just teaching them to use their body and their mind to the fullest capability. You will see by the time they're eighteen, they will be phenomenal creatures because your success in this world is just this. The physical world, the success is just this. How effectively can you use your physical body and your mind? That's all your success is. That's all it is, isn't it? A little bit of knowledge you need, the damn knowledge is all on the net, you don't have to keep it in your head. It's all in the net. Unless you want to do some specific kind of activity for you, want to build some knowledge, you can do that. But that also, I would say the whole education system, which is little over twenty years right now, can be compressed to five to six years if people are of a certain mental capability. And every human being, almost every human being except those who are impaired in some way, almost every human being is capable of this. If only you take off the silly expectations which are a crippling factor because your expectation is if somebody is doing this, you want to do one step more even if that's a crippled standard. You don't go about building expectations, you just work upon building your body and your mind to enable yourself that you can use it to the fullest extent. We don't know how you will use it. What you do in this world should be relevant to the situation in which you exist, isn't it? Action is always about the situation, not about you. If this one thing, if you get it, then there will be no expectation. Simply you do what's needed. In a given situation, you simply do what's needed, that's all. If you're placed in Mumbai, you learn the stock market. If you're placed in Kanyakumari, you learn fishing. This also you do well, that's also you do well, that's all, wherever you are, that's all there is, isn't it? My question is, I have lost my spark, okay? And I'm not a very much uh, like, you know, continuous, consistently motivated person. I have lost my motivation how to regain that, to live my life and lead in a… in a… like a joyful way, so to be, regain your inner peace. Thank you, sir. See, uh, the nature of life is such… please sit down, it's okay. If you… if you go outside in the garden and try to catch an ant, the BHU ant. <laughs> Who is born here, has grown up here and probably he'll die here, that BHU ant. If you try to catch him, he'll say, okay, to hell with my life, okay, crush me if you want. Is it so? He'll do everything to protect himself. He values his life, isn't it? Very much or no? Tiny little creature that we may not even notice. We may step on him without even seeing him, unfortunately. But he values his life immensely. Does he or no? He's got spark. 
but you a human being at least on this planet you are the peak of evolution physiologically at least yes if other behavioral aspects if we may have questions <laughs> but physiologically at least the most evolved creature on the planet what the most evolved creature on the planet means is it has the most complex neurological system and it has the highest level of cerebral capability that means you can think you can remember you have memory you have a very vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination an ant doesn't have such a vivid sense of memory nor does he have any great imagination he has some but he has a presence of mind about the life that he is living because the education systems that you are going through right from kindergarten level is such that it is about everything except you it's about everything else somebody is phd in tourism somebody is phd in biotechnology somebody is phd in something nothing about this how does this function there is no attention at all a human being functions you know you have a kalabhairava temple here what this means is a human being exists in three times he lives because of the richness of his memory how rich is your memory determines what you will do and what you will not do right now isn't it so so memory is important the present experience is important and how vivid is your imagination for tomorrow is very important right now the problem is these things have all gotten mixed up because discipline of faculty has simply not come nothing has been taught to our children that there needs to be discipline means people think english kind of discipline walking like this like idiots discipline of faculty is not there because of this your own mind turns against you what happened 10 years ago you still suffer hello what may happen day after tomorrow you already suffer because there's no discipline of faculty you don't know how to use your memory you don't know how to use your imagination your memory makes you suffer your imagine makes imagination makes you suffer and you think you are suffering your life you are not suffering your life you are only suffering the two greatest faculties of being human vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of hum imagination isn't it so if you suffer the greatest faculties that you have what can we do with you if you suffer a ailment understandable if you suffer a disability understandable if you suffer your ability hopeless case yes or no you are suffering your capabilities if you are suffering your disability it's all right you are suffering your capabilities i must tell you this about 4 5 months ago i think you might have seen it on the news a young lady 34 year old lady who was a television anchor in hyderabad jumped off the fifth floor window killed herself left a note nobody is responsible for my death my brain is my enemy how many million years it took to get this brain to this size and now it becomes your enemy she articulated this but this is true with almost 90% of the human beings they are suffering their own intelligence isn't it if you take away half their brain if you take away half their brain they will be peaceful yes and that is why a whole bunch of idiots are going about saying that the ultimate goal of life is peace of mind such people will only rest in peace <laughs> now you young man university life if somebody is not keying you up all the time it could become too easy you know even i remember when i went to the university most of the time we were in the canteen not in the garden the easiest part of my life was university 
Uh, I think uh, I know nobody is going to like it and… Uh, but I think this university time must be shortened unless somebody is producing something brilliant, they must be chucked out within three to four years' time, everybody. If they're doing something very focused and very intense, they must stay. Otherwise, see this is all I'm telling all of you young people, do whatever the hell you want in your life. But you must be intensely focused on something. If you're not investing in anything, your life, it will just go waste. Because as I told you in the very beginning, one basic ingredient of your life is time and this is just going away. Already you're two hours closer to your grave since I came here. Yes or no? Two hours closer to Manikarnika. Yes or no? Yes, you are not immortal. It's just a limited amount of time. Are you a precious life, I'm asking you? Is your life precious to you? Yes. Then you must decide where you want to invest this life. If this is precious, if this is worthless, throw it somewhere. If this is precious, invest in something worthwhile, isn't it? So if you invest this in something wor worthwhile, not spark, you will be a flame all the time. When it comes to what you want to do, you must think clearly, it's very important. Thinking clearly means the question is not about what will get me this, what will get me that. Is your life precious to you? All of you, I'm asking. Your life, is it precious to you? So before you invest this life into something, you must look whether today if I invest my life into this, after twenty-five years, will it still mean a lot to me? After fifty years, will it still mean a lot to me? At the end of my life, you turn back and I look, Will I be proud of this or will I be ashamed of what I'm doing right now? Doesn't matter what other people say. But you should not do anything that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it so? It doesn't matter, people say so many things. Everybody has an opinion, it's their business. But you don't do something that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it? Then you're going turning against yourself. Somebody turns against you, you can leave them and go somewhere else. If you turn against yourself, you'll have to live with it forever. Something will get you money, something will get you comfort, that's not the point. What you choose to do, Will it give you a life? When I say give it… give you a life, are you just trying to make a living or are you trying to make a life out of this? It's important. Making a living is not an issue. A worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, all of them are making their life, making a living, isn't it so? They're even making a life out of it, but definitely they're making a living. So making a living with such a big brain is not an issue. Earning your food is not an issue, making a living is not an issue. Only problem is you want to live like somebody else, that's an endless problem. I want to live is not a problem. I want to live like you, this is a problem. It is important if you consider your life as a precious life, you must make sure you make a wonderful life out of this. Whatever opens up in that direction, that is the thing you should do. But when you are under the pressure of peers, somebody is saying, I'm going to America, somebody says, I'm going to the government job, somebody says, I'm doing this. One thing that every young person should do is, without the influence of the peers of your own age group, without the influence of your professors and your parents, without the any kind of influence, somewhere you must stay by yourself, at least for two, three days and look at it. What is it that I want to invest this precious life into? What is it that will be worthwhile today and worthwhile after fifty years for me to invest myself into? You invest your life into that, whatever it is. However small, big, it doesn't matter. If you see that this is something truly worthwhile and you invest your life in that, this will be a life of fulfillment. You must not do something because he's doing it. You must not do something because he's not doing it. This is not the way to decide things. You're investing your life, if this life is precious, you must see what is it that really matters to you. And you must do that, it doesn't matter, it pays, it doesn't pay, but believe me, if your heart is not in something really, you will not do your best. If you don't do your best, how will great things happen to you? See whether it is art, music, design, business, sport, spirituality, politics, it doesn't matter what it is. If you are not absolutely devoted to what you're doing, you will never do anything significant in your life, that's for hundred percent, I'm telling you. You may earn a living, but you will not do anything significant 
if you are not totally, totally devoted to something. The question is not about what you want to do, the question is just this, can you be devoted to this? Let's say you think in terms of today, if I invest my life, next twenty-five years, can I be devoted to what I am doing right now? Will this matter to me? Will I feel fulfilled if I look back and see what I have done? You do whatever the hell you want, just do it well, that's important. And don't do any damn thing that you will be ashamed of doing tomorrow. What other people say doesn't matter, but you should not be ashamed of what you have done. This much you must keep, this much pride and freedom you must keep in your life. It doesn't matter, the whole world says you're wrong, but you are not ashamed of what you have done. That much you must always keep in your life. If that one thing, if you give up, I'm telling you, you'll live a very poor life. You may have everything, but you'll have nothing. If you are <laughs> a joyful state, more unpredictability, more fun, isn't it so? If we are miserable, even smallest suspense will freak the hell out of us. Have you seen a suspense thriller movie or read a book like that? Suspense means what? You go see their wall poster, oh this director, this actor, maybe this will happen, mind projects. You go inside the theater, you watch all those uh, still pictures, ten pictures are there, you see, oh this guy is going to do this, I think she's going to do that, oh he's going to do this, this is what is going to happen. You try to imagine the picture. Then you go sit in the auditorium, first few scenes, then you said, definitely this is what is going to happen, prediction. Few minutes, it went wrong. You made another prediction, oh, I, now I got it, this is what is going to happen, went wrong. Then you said, no, 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 not that, now I know, this is what is going to happen, went wrong. Then halfway down, you discuss with your friend and decide, last scene, I'm sure this is it. When the last scene came, something totally different happened. Then you come out and say, wow, what a wonderful movie. You saw the first scene and you said, well, this is what will happen in the last scene and that's what happened. Then you come back and said, this is no good, yes or no? So if all your predictions go wrong, it's wonderful. I'm asking, what's wrong with your life then? Nothing wrong with your life, something wrong with you. That is, if suspense happens, your heart will palpitate. <laughs> If suspense happens, you go into depression, your brain will freeze. If suspense happens, your heart will break. So the problem is you have lost your ability to enjoy suspense. You are a kind of a fix match guy. You want to fix the match before you play the game. So I want to know the result of today's work before I do it. How many of you are really capable of absolutely involving yourself in something fully knowing what's the result. Ninety-nine percent of the people cannot involve themselves in today if they know what is tomorrow. So it's best that you don't know what is tomorrow, isn't it? One thing you need to understand is, in this business of life, you have not come with any investment, you came empty-handed. So whatever is happening, you're on the profit side. Only problem is you've lost the ability to enjoy the suspense. You are a fixed match. So you go to your uh, astrologer, you write a horoscope and everything and say, what will happen, what will happen? No, you should not know what will happen. If you are a joyful state, more unpredictability, more fun, isn't it so? If we are miserable, even smallest suspense will freak the hell out of us. The problem is just this, you lost your ability to enjoy the suspense. Nothing wrong with life, nothing wrong with business. No Sadhguru, but uh, market conditions have become like this, this is happening, that's suspense. Do you see, almost every movie, particularly in the Indian movies, you know, a uh, hero gets thrashed by thirty-five people at a time, we thought he's going to die, we know he's not going to die, that's a problem. If there was little suspense, maybe he will die, but we know he cannot die. And even if he dies, somebody who can raise the dead will come and in the last scene he will be standing like this. This is the problem. <laughs> right now, this is what you want to be, you've been inspired by these movies. No matter what happens, you must be the winner. No, it's all right. It falls this way, it falls that way, it falls that way. Essentially, you came with nothing, so whatever the hell is happening, your 
balance sheet is doing great. Your balance sheet is doing great because you come with nothing. You came with something, then you are losing it, yes, we can have, we would address it in a different way. You came with nothing, what the hell are you complaining about? You must just get this one point before you enter life. In terms of uh, doing anything in the world, well, we should know what we are doing, the capability, intelligence, all these things are there. But one important aspect that especially when you are young, you try to miss is the timing. If you don't time your actions right, even the best actions will go waste. People who don't know how to time it, they will look, look at the astrological chart and say, this is good time, bad time, auspicious time, inauspicious time. Those who don't know how to time their life, they will start looking for standard charts, what is good time, what is bad time. There's no such thing. Timing is most important. This is something I'm constantly striving with people around me to understand the significance of timing. The significance of the action they understand, but they don't understand most of the time the significance of timing. If the timing is right, even a small action will produce a huge impact. The timing is wrong, even if you push so hard, only little will happen. So timing is very, very important. How do you arrive at this? In one month, twenty-four hours every day, one month long, thirty days, are you in the same state of physical and mental competence? No, it's all the time going here and there. So when you want to hit an important shot, you must be at your best. You time it, when you are at your best, you do important things. When you're not so good, you don't do it. There is also timing with the rest of the world, the situations. That will take much more experience and observation to hit the right thing at the right time. But at least the timing with yourself that you are at your best. When you want to do important things, you are at your best. This must happen. Once you understand this, then you will realize it's extremely important to keep yourself at your best every moment of your life. Because every little thing that you do, if you learn to do it with as much significance as the so-called big things that you do, then you will see the cumulative impact of that over a period of time is so big. You didn't do anything big, you did only little, little things. But these little things add up to something phenomenal simply because you took care to do those little things with absolute intention and attention. Intensity of uh, expression of what you're doing. One simple thing is just this, you don't decide what is important, what is not important. Just pay as much attention to everything the same way and apply yourself with the same level of intensity. If God comes, same intensity. If an ant comes, same intensity of attention and involvement. You just do this, everything will sort itself out. The right now, the biggest problem with human beings is they think this is important, that's not important, this person is great, this person is no good, this is okay, this is not okay, this is God, this is devil. This is their problem. In this, they are becoming half a life because half the time they are not there because they think it's not important. Tell me you're breathing right now, is it important? So you must do it with total involvement and intensity. If it is not important, you must stop it, isn't it? Just do this one thing. There is no such thing as important and not important. Whether you look at your friend or you look at somebody you don't like, doing something important or important in socially or not so important socially, as far as you are concerned as a life, every moment of your life is equally important. Everything that you do is important. What is not important, just don't do it. Why are you investing your life in something that you think is not important? You're doing something silly, let's say, I think it's not important, it doesn't matter. But you think it's important, only if you think it's important, you must invest your life in it, isn't it? Otherwise, why? If you do this, you will arrive at the timing, it will take a little time, but you will arrive at the timing. And that timing is extremely important, extreme. You have… Uh, you've watched uh, games, let's say maybe cricket or golf if you watched, always everybody is talking about the timing of hitting the ball. Strength of hitting the ball is not the thing, it's the timing. Somebody hits the same ball with great amount of, you know, wasting energy, another person just flicks it, it goes to the same place. It's a timing. That is true even in your life. Timing is the most important thing, 
because the time that you have in this life and the energy that you have in your life is limited. It's a limited resource. Nobody has endless energy, isn't it? Nobody has endless time. You have to time it right. First thing is to talk, start observing yourself. When you're at your best, you must do. And now if you observe yourself sufficiently, you will see you have to be at your best every moment. There's no such thing as this is important, this is not important. As individual human beings, as a generation of people, what should we be doing in our lives? What I would say is, as a young man, I want to open your eyes and look at the world. Right now, please see what is the most needed thing in the world right now. You don't do some fanciful thing that you like to do. You must do what's most needed, isn't it? If you get carried away by situations, People become like this, it's useful but it is not the basic thing. Today you saw a train burning, so you want to become a firefighter. Tomorrow you saw something, you want to become that. In reaction, in emotional reaction, you choose to become something, it could be useful on some level. But now, when most young people cannot think, you're thinking, what should I do with my life? When such a thought has come, I would say spend little more time on it not being influenced by anybody or anything, simply look at it, what is it that the humanity needs most? What is it that the world needs most today? I want you to recognize that. The only thing that needs to be fixed on this planet is human beings, everything else is fine, isn't it so? I would say all young people, not just you, must take a break from what you're doing, just caught up because you did school, you went to a college, because you did college, you went to the next thing and the next thing and you end up with a PhD, what to do? And today knowledge has no use because whatever a PhD holder knows, a high school kid can open the internet and talk the same language. You can't even look smart anymore with what you collected, isn't it? Because just about anybody will talk these things because it's all over the place. So are you preparing for a university? or the universe. <laughs> That's where you have to live, unless you want to become an academic. I'm not saying these things are wrong, but human beings, sensible human beings must invest their life towards what is needed most, isn't it? Not some fanciful thing that I want to do or you want to do. You can do whatever, joyfully or miserably, isn't it? And just because today you think, by doing this I will be happy, if you go, don't ever think you will stay happy by doing the, that after some time. Everybody, when they got their first job, what a beautiful day it was. You went to this mangy little office, sat there and wow! <laughs> How it felt! But after a few years, sitting behind the same table, it's taking your life. The same job, the same marriage, the same situations, they're taking your life, but one day it looked like heaven, after some time it looks like hell, isn't it? Not because there's something wrong with those jobs, simply because you're doing it for the wrong reason. Now that you're thinking, I would say take a few weeks off, be willing to give you the space, just stay uninfluenced by anybody, just look at it. There are many things you will want to do right now because of immediate compulsions. You're broke right now, you think the first thing is to find a job or some other compulsion within you, you think this is the first thing is to do this. Suppose you had none of these compulsions, what would you like to do with life? That's what you should do. You should not decide your life and the course of your life based on immediate compulsions. Idiots do things that they don't like to do, suffer for their whole life because they think it's needed or they think it's their duty. Intelligent people do what they love to do, they enjoy their life to some extent. But a genius learns to do what is needed joyfully. That's when your genius flowers, because it's no more about you. You decide in your life, if you do this for hundred years and look back, after hundred years if you look back, is it still worthwhile? You do that. There are many others who would like to be you. Oh, 
I wish I was twenty and I wish I could think what to do at that time, I did something. There are any number of people here. Now that you're twenty and you're fortunate that you're thinking and it's fortunate that you're here, it's time you think straight before you do anything <laughs> If people experience this for two minutes a day, their lives will change, definitely, I'm telling you. One thing is before you go to bed, just sit in your bed just for two minutes, two minutes, just see. Suppose you're going to die right now in two minutes' time, how it'll be? And then sleep. You will see tomorrow when you wake up, you'll wake up like you just born. If you go to sleep with this awareness, you will wake up with a completely new dimension of energy within you. Suppose you wake up tomorrow. Every day, nearly three hundred thousand people don't wake up tomorrow. So in case you wake up tomorrow, Check and see if you're still alive. If you are, just do this much for your sake, not my sake. One big smile, you're still alive. Is your life worth this much? See, do not think every day you will wake up, one day you will not wake up. Tomorrow morning you woke up, check if you're still alive. If you're dead, I will pardon you. If you're alive, one big smile. Then if three hundred thousand people die on the planet, maybe three to five, five million people, would have lost somebody who's dear to them. So just check those four or five people who matter to you in your life, all of them still alive. One more smile. And you looked at the watch, it's seven o'clock and you're still alive. One more smile. From now on you must do this every time you look at the time. If you're alive, you must smile because this is the greatest thing happening to you. Not your money, not your profession, not your family, you're alive right now. This is the thing. Very brief, let's make it happen. many things in the world. Some things will happen, some things won't happen, some things will act for us, some things will work against us. These things are happening all the time. But am I functioning for myself or am I functioning against myself? Within this, is my life little more exuberant, little more better, little more joyful, little more peaceful? You just measure this every day. So you must ma maintain an account book. If you're doing business, how do you know whether you're progressing? Only one who keeps accounts knows whether he is making money or going down. Similarly, you must maintain an account. You just see, let's say yesterday you were joyful five times in the day. Today if you're six, you're better. Tomorrow if you're seven, you're better. But day after tomorrow if you're three, you're worse. How many moments of joy do you have? Why I'm talking about joy is we're not using joy as a goal. Joy is a measure. Joy means you're at ease. Joy means you become more of life than being a mental mess. Joy does not mean that you attain to something. Joy simply means life has come to ease, you're not messing yourself up. Spend five minutes, have I been better today than yesterday? Has my day been better? Every day, if you keep accounts, you will see no matter what the hell happens in life situations, you will not go down. Here I am not trying to tell you what to eat and what not to eat. You eat whatever you want, but being a human being, the most important thing is that you do it consciously. Whatever you do must happen consciously. Your selection of food and consumption of food also must happen consciously. More than what you eat, how you eat it is also equally important. When I say how you eat it, these are all life substances. Every one of them had a life of their own, whether it's a plant, animal, vegetable, every one of them had a life of their own. If you approach it with a certain sense of gratitude and reverence towards the food that you eat, when I say reverence, it may feel like too much for you, but I'm asking you, let's say we put you in a room and you had nothing to eat for five days. If God appears in front of you, what will you ask for? Food? So that's how important it is. You must understand the food on your plate is not just a substance, it is not a material, it is not a commodity, it is life. It is the life-making material for you. So you must treat it as such. Right now, when it's on the plate, when it's out there, it has no value. But the moment you consume it and it becomes your flesh and blood, now suddenly it's of immense value. Why do we live like that? It's very important when it comes on your plate itself, you must treat it as a part of yourself. With great reverence, you must consume. Just the way you consume it, if you change that, food will behave very differently within you.
The soil that you walk upon has a certain sense of intelligence and memory. So even if you happen to live in a concrete jungle, it is important to keep in touch with the earth upon which you live. Create ways for yourself to somehow remain in touch with the soil or the earth upon which you live, that part of the earth. With your bare hands and bare feet, see particularly the palms and the soles if they come in touch with the earth on a daily basis at least for a few minutes. A certain harmonizing of the physiological process will happen just being in contact with the earth. If you spend at least a few minutes in your garden barefooted, touching plants or trees, because this is the basis of your life. All life, yours and every other creature has come out of this earth. Stay in touch with it and harmonize your system. Your ability to live well on this planet is essentially how well you can harness this body and this mind. So if you have to harness this the way you want it, it's very important. There is a little space between you and the body, there is a little space between you and the mind. Whatever suffering, any kind of suffering that you have known in your life has entered you either through the body or through the mind. Do you know any other kind of suffering? Physical suffering, mental suffering, there's only two things you know. If a little distance arises between you and the body, between you and the mind, this is the end of suffering. Once there is no fear of suffering, only then you will explore the full depth and dimension of this life. One thing we want to do is, we are bringing this what's called as Isha Kriya, which gives you a distance between you and your thought, between you and your body. If people experience this for two minutes a day, their lives will change, definitely, I'm telling you. Once they know the freedom of it, you will not like anything, you will not like any drink or drug or whatever because it is a much big high than that, much, much big high than anything that you have seen. See, everybody is finding a certain excuse for their own miseries. So, my parents were like this, so I am like this. Well, this is unfixable because we can't change your parents now, all right? Hello? So, you need to understand this, especially if you have gone through tough situations in life or horrible situations in life, let's say. Is it not important that you become wiser sooner than other people? Sooner than other people who have grown up in comfort who do not know what it is to see those things, is it not very important that you should become wiser? No, instead you choose that you also become miserable because they were miserable people. So let us understand this much, you have an intelligence to recognize that they are living badly. How come you don't have an intelligence to recognize you are living badly right now and you don't even have the fundamental integrity to see if I am living badly, it is me who is making this? Because there may be situations and situations. For every one of us, there are situations. In fact, the more you try to do in the world, the more and more many ugly situations you will have to face whether you like it or you don't like it, okay? Now, because you face ugly situations, will you also become ugly or you will use this as manure to blossom into your wonderful flower? This is a choice that you have. So everything that hurts us, everything that in some way uh, is negative to in a given situation, whether you will become wise or you will become wounded is your choice. Do not look for ideal situations because there is no such place. There is no, ch no such place. Wherever you go, there will be something happening that you think is negative. Whether it's negative or not, I don't want to make a judgment. But in a given place, you think there is negative. A whole lot of people who have applied to get into your uh, institution like uh, ISB, they are all thinking, if I enter ISB, it is like heaven. But I'm sure there are many people in your institution who think this is the most horrible place, full of politics, full of nonsense, full of this. Aren't there such people? Hello? I'm sure they are there, you don't become one of them. Because in every place, <laughs> there are issues, all right? Where there are two people, there is an issue. How we conduct these issues depends on are we in a state of conscious response to these issues or are we in some compulsive reaction 
to these issues. This determines how we conduct ourselves. So, whatever happened in your early age, this has become a syndrome all over the world because they've all read a little bit of Freud, little bit of Maslow, little bit of all this European uh, psychiatric stuff. And everybody is a psychiatrist. Because my parents were like this, I am like this. Come on, huh? where is your intelligence? If your parents were like this, you must take a wow, you will never ever be like that. Hello? If your parents lived so badly, if it is true, I don't even know whether they lived badly or not. If they lived badly, is it not your business to see never ever you commit such mistakes as they're committing in their lives? I want you to understand, for you to come to this level of intelligence, it's taken millions of years of work of evolution to get you here to the peak of evolution on this planet. So being the peak of evolution, are we displaying that we are the top of the world? Are we? No, we want to sit on somebody else's head and think top of the world. No, we are already top of the world as human beings, isn't it so? But look at the way we are behaving, all the time complaining about something or the other. Let us understand this. What the world throws at us is not necessarily your choice. But what you make out of it is entirely your choice. Yes? What you make out of it is entirely your choice. Your experience of life, this much you must come to every one of you young people. If you want your potential to open up in the world, one important thing that you must fix in your life is your experience of life, either peacefulness or agitation, either joy or misery, blissfulness or suffering, whatever it is, your experience, your experience is entirely made by you. Other people are doing what they want, their drama they're conducting. It is your reaction to that which is causing these experiences to you. Right now, if I abuse you, I won't, I'm just telling you. Suppose I abuse you, the abuse is in my mouth. It is not a bullet, it doesn't come and hit you. But it's your reaction which causes the suffering, isn't it? Suppose I abuse you, nicely in Tamil language. If I abuse you in a language that you don't understand, with a smile on my face, you will think I'm saying sweet things to you, isn't it? And you'll, you'll respond nicely to me. So I'm telling you, your experience of what is happening with you right now is one hundred percent determined by you. Human experience ha happens from within, not from outside. Outside influences are there. How far we allow them to affect us, unless they're physical situations. You're in a war zone, somebody's shooting at you, that's a different matter, all right? So, the privilege of being human being is this, that we have an intelligence to determine what should be our experience of life. Other creatures are in a natural, instinctive, compulsive reaction. We are supposed to be above that, but most human beings are trying to disprove this and they are also in a compulsive state of reaction. And above all, parents, well, they are living the way they know best, isn't it? If they knew any better, they would have done better. They are doing their best. Well, they gave birth to you, which is a phenomenal thing. Maybe not willingly, but they gave birth to you one way or the other. And they gave you enough food and education and nonsense, whatever you needed, and brought you up to this level. Now, don't keep on looking at the rear view mirror forever. They have brought you up, you've grown up into an adult, you survived, all right? Many children die early on. They brought you up, you've grown up, you are in the rear view mirror. Please, leave the rear view mirror and look ahead because you can't fix your past. There is no way you can fix an yesterday, but you can create a tomorrow. Let's make that happen. Whatever you wish to do, you must bring yourself to moment of joy and clarity within yourself. At that moment, what you decide, even if you die, you must go by that. Whenever your emotions go up and down, your mind says many things, that's not important. It says one thing today, the one thing in the morning, one thing in the evening. It says one thing today and another thing tomorrow. That's of no consequence. In the moment of clarity, when I'm saying joy, because when you're happy, you're not compulsive. When you're very happy and clear, at that time, if you look at things and see that, yes, this is what is more sensible for me, 
just do that, it doesn't matter if it feels like hell, it doesn't matter. You go through hell for ten years, it doesn't matter, you just do that because that's where your well-being is. When you're in different states of compulsiveness, if you make decisions as to which way to turn, you will be endlessly lost. It is not about what you're doing, it is just that you're doing it in, in an unwavering way. Every day you are off and on, off and on, doesn't happen. You just unwavering, you become one-pointed. It doesn't matter what it is. If you want to be a butcher, be a butcher in an unwavering way, it will open up. Just not wavering for a moment, what you have decided in a moment of clarity and joy, just sticking onto it without wavering a little bit, nobody can deny it to you. Every day when your thoughts and emotions fly this way and that way, you keep changing your mind, changing your mind, changing your mind, you will go in circles, endlessly in circles. Because one who changes direction too often, obviously is not interested in going anywhere, isn't it? The world is round, so which direction you go, it doesn't matter. As long as you go without changing direction, you'll make the journey, isn't it? You'll complete the journey, isn't it? If you change your direction, it'll put you into an endless state of being lost, always lost. You want to be there? Be there, no problem. You want to be here? Be here. Don't go on changing your mind every day, morning one way, evening another way. You are a torture to yourself and everybody around you. One who is constantly changing their mind is a torture to the himself and to everyone around, isn't it so? Right now you're thinking, tomorrow morning I'm going to do my yoga. Tomorrow morning when the dawn at five o'clock in the morning, I hear it every day, I don't know how many of you hear it. The moment it goes dawn, then your body says to hell with this yoga, its priorities keep changing and changing and changing. There is another way to live where the biggest joys that you have known in your life, the greatest pleasures that you have known in your life will look like ant's pleasure. This being is capable of that. When it comes to body and mind, we are all differently capable. No two bodies are equally capable, no two minds are equally capable. But when it comes to this being, every being is equally capable of containing the very existence within himself. Scientists are saying it's ever expanding. How to contain it? That's the whole beauty of it. That which is endless, that which is eternal, that which is boundless and that which is always expanding, that can be contained in this being. About that, no two beings are differently capable every being is equally capable. It doesn't happen because you keep changing direction. Wherever you find a little niche which is comfortable, you try to settle down there. This so-called uh, getting civilized has become a huge detriment for spiritual <laughs> process, not essentially but I would like to say this. Because uh, if… if you were a nomad, you know nomad means what? That means you're not mad. So who is not a nomad? One who is mad. One who is mad settles down. One who is not mad moves on and on and on, doesn't settle down anywhere. The moment we stopped being nomadic, we got into a certain kind of madness of safety and security. Whether it's physical, psychological or emotional, we're always looking for that niche where we can settle down and sleep. <laughs> Once you find a niche and it gets too sweet and comfortable and you don't have the courage to step out and once again make the journey. So if all you're looking for a picnic is a picnic, then it's okay. You know it feels like that. If you want to try to climb the seventh hill, you climb a certain distance where your knees will be creaking and your breath will be looking like a you know, a steam locomotive, push, 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 it's going. Then you look around and the bamboo, the beautiful rocks, the bamboo around you and everything is so wonderful. The valley is so beautiful. What is the purpose of taking one more step? This is wonderful, this is it. Your mind tells you this is it. It's… I'm not questioning the beauty of the place. I'm not questioning the pleasure of being there. 
But right now, this argument has come, this new level of logic has come in you simply because your lungs are working like a steam engine and your legs are creaking like an unoiled bullock cart. So, new logic will come. Do you see every time for different situations that you get into, different states of comfort or discomfort you get into, you develop a new logic? Have you noticed this with yourself? Like they say, when you are a student, everybody is a communist. The moment you come out of your education and get yourself a job, you become a socialist. The moment you get married, you become a capitalist. According to your new situations, different levels of comfort or discomfort, new levels of logic will come. The world has come to a point where the Maoists have become capitalist, that's it. That is it, you know. <laughs> it keeps happening. That's why in a certain moment of clarity and joy, when you are there, you look at something, what you see is your well-being. You stick to that. Tomorrow it looks like horror to you, it doesn't matter, you stick to it. It feels like hell, you stick to it. That's well-being. If you keep shifting, nothing happens. Just yesterday somebody was reminding me, even I didn't realize this. I had a hard schedule in United States and UK, I landed here. Just one day in the ashram, then I went to Australia, endless schedule. One day I went down with some stupid fever and uh, then I came back here, just one day, then I went to Nepal, I trekked in Kailash, Nepal trek, Kailash trek, I came back. Not even one day, half a day, then I was off to Kaveri calling. You know, I was on five-day national tour where, uh, you know, trying to get all this political stuff going for Kaveri calling. I came back and the same day I started for Kaveri calling. And I finished this, I came here just not even a day, seventeenth came, we came, eighteenth early morning, nine o'clock I left again for meetings in Bangalore and it's been on, 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 only yesterday I came back. So they were saying, Sadhguru, you've not had a single break, day's break. Today is my break day, okay? <laughs> Why are you clapping your hands? <laughs> Since morning there have been piles of files and here you are, all of you. <laughs> and now there are meetings and meetings and at eleven o'clock there is Kala Bhairava Karma tonight, Mahalaya Amavasya, this is a break day. <laughs> okay. So, will the body complain sometimes? Of course it does. If the body is not complaining, that means you're not using it. Hello? It must complain, but you don't complain. This is all you have to learn. For this, you need devotion towards what you're doing. If you don't have devotion, before the body, mind will complain, emotion will complain, everything will complain. No, no, no. First, body should complain, that means you're stretched physically. Then mind can take a little judicious, judicious decision like me, you can take a break like me. That means only till twelve o'clock you're active in the night. Only till midnight, after that you're sleeping. Otherwise it'll go on till two a.m. It's a break day. If your body is not feeling, life is tough, body, not mind. <laughs> if your body is not feeling life is tough, that means you're not doing anything worthwhile. Hmm? Your body should be constantly stretched, it must feel it's tough. When you go to bed, you should not sleep, you must die <laughs> Yes. One pillow like this. Neend nahi aaraya. No. You lie down on the rock, you fall dead, just like that. That's how you should be by the end of the day. Huh? 
then next day morning it will bounce back as if it's being born again. Um, <laughs> this way, no, you must feel it's tough on the system because this is the nature of this. The harder you stretch it, the stronger it becomes, the better it becomes, huh? Those who are trying to save it for another day, not using it, uh, they will… Life cannot be preserved, this must be understood, huh? Dead things can be preserved. Life cannot be preserved, it can only be nourished and used. If you're trying to preserve and save yourself, not going to work. They were constantly bombarding me in… Uh, where was it? Bangalore or Delhi somewhere with too much activity, non-stop meeting. I said, I'm going on a vacation for one hour <laughs> When you're young, even that one hour vacation should not exist in your life. Yes? Otherwise you will grow old too soon, yes. Those who take too many vacations, they will grow old too soon. When you are young, not even five minutes vacation, this doesn't mean you are doing something, doing something, doing something. This means in one way or the other, you are constantly upgrading yourself, either with external work or internal work. But upgradation should happen to a point Wherever you stand, you stand out. This is not in competition with anybody. But this life must get to its full scope, isn't it so? This is what every life is trying, this is not unique to us. A coconut tree is doing everything possible to become a good coconut tree, full-fledged. So is a bird, so is a grasshopper, so is a worm, so is an elephant, so is everything, isn't it so? Only human being is hesitating because uh, they did not learn how to handle their own cerebral activity. Their own thought is just messing them up. Even a basic question, should I, be, should I become a full-fledged life or not? Such a question has become a debate and people think it's intelligence. Hello? Whether you should become a full-fledged human being or not, is there a debate… debate about it? Huh? There's no debate about it, that's a way of life. This has to become a full-fledged life. If this becomes a full-fledged life, what will it do? I don't care what it does. Whatever it does, it will do it very well. That's all that's important. Hmm? Whatever it does, it will do it well. That's all that matters. It's not only one kind of activity is important in the world, every activity is important. If it is done well, it's fantastic, whatever it is. Somebody sweeps the floor, see they have done well, is it not wonderful? Is this a lesser job than something else? So, for this to look at everything the same way, to function at full speed all the time, you need devotion, you need the fire of devotion, otherwise uh, Thayre. Why am I talking against Thayre? <laughs> this could become discriminatory against the cows. Even if you die, you must live. But when you're living, you should not be dead, isn't it? Hello? Those who really lived totally, even if they are dead long time ago, they still live, isn't it, in some way? Yes or no? Well, we still remember Adiyogi after thousands of years because he lived so intensely. Many sages, saints like this, who lived so intensely that after a few thousand years, we still cannot forget them. They still live in our minds and hearts. In a couple of days, uh, is Mahatma Gandhi's 150th birth anniversary. 
See, the man still lives simply because whatever he was doing, we can agree, disagree with him on many things, but whatever he was doing, doing it absolutely without hesitation, isn't it? This much must happen to you that your body, your mind, your emotion, your energies are, or not, are not an impediment in your life, they are instruments of empowerment in your life. This much you must do. succeed in our life, which will play a major role, Guruji? Faith, God, effort or luck? Or winning election. <laughs> if you want to win an election, that all luck is also important. <laughs> Faith, God, luck, effort. Maybe all of them, but in what proportion? So when you say faith, obviously it's something that you cannot do anything about. When you say luck, again obviously it's something that you cannot do anything about. When you say God, again it's something that you cannot do anything about. So only thing that's in your hands is effort. So put your hundred percent into your effort, what happens, happens, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so don't leave proportions of your energy and your capability to luck, God, fate, all these things. That's not your business, if there is such a thing, it will act. Your business is only effort, isn't it? Just do that. Effort has to be incisive in a sense. It should be focused, calibrated. Simply if you make effort, it's foolish effort, isn't it? Just labor is not going to get you somewhere. Right kind of action, the right timing, right place, all this is important, isn't it? So, for all these things to happen, you need perception and intelligence. So that's all you must do in your life constantly looking for ways to enhance your perception and your intelligence. The rest will anyway happen. This is one thing that unfortunately humanity is not doing. They are trying to become capable of something. Do not try to become capable of something. Just enhance your perception and intelligence, whatever comes your way. Right now, let us say it's like this, you know, this is happening in the world all the time. Everybody wants to become a doctor. Not now, if twenty-five years ago it was so. If you want to study means, first thing is medicine. If you don't get a seat, what's next? Engineering. Don't get a seat, what? Next thing, next thing, like this. So let's say you became a doctor and let us say everybody came to the yoga program and they stopped going to your doctor. At least your visits to the doctor has come down, isn't it? Has it? Has it come down or no? For sure it's come down. So business will go down. It will no more be a good profession to go into because very few doctors are becoming doctors because they want to become doctors. Others are becoming doctors because they think it's lucrative, isn't it? Isn't it so? Most people are becoming doctors because they think somebody's sickness is a lucrative business. <laughs> it's a very… I don't want to go into a other aspects, it's quite disturbing for me. <laughs> There are a few doctors who really want to be that. They want to understand the human system and they want to serve in that direction, that's great. Suppose everybody became healthy. You don't want that, isn't it? Yes, you don't want that. So do not try to put up a recipe 
for your success. Success is only when you are able to use yourself to your full potential. It doesn't matter whether you become a doctor or a politician or a yogi or what the hell you become is not the thing. Success means you are living your life to your full potential. That's what success means. If that has to happen, you need perception and an active intelligence. How do I grow my intelligence? Don't worry about that. Right now the important thing is to enhance your perception. If you are able to see life just the way it is, you have the necessary intelligence to conduct it well. If you are not able to see life the way it is, your intelligence will work against you. Most intelligent people on this planet are generally the most miserable people on the planet. This is simply because they have an active intelligence but no perception of life. So, one thing, one most important thing that people have not worked at is to enhance their perception. They are trying to broaden their mind, that's not the point. That will only make you socially successful, not truly successful. If you want to be truly successful, you must be able to see everything just the way it is, without distortions. If you can see everything just the way it is, life becomes a play. You can play it joyfully, you can play it well for sure. If you can play it well, people will say you're successful. You should never think, I want to be successful. Don't ever think, I want to be successful. Just see how to make this being into a full-fledged being. People will say one day, oh, he's successful, he's a great success. You should not be aspiring for success, it's a miserable way to structure your life. You will simply cause pain and suffering to yourself and suffering to everybody because your idea of success is sitting on top of somebody's head, isn't it? Yes or no? Your idea of success is right now, everybody should be below you, you must be on the top. This is your idea of success. This is not success, this is sickness. So do not ever think of success, just see how to make this into a full-fledged being. This will find expression. If it finds good expression, people around you will say, oh, he is a great success, that's fine. People should recognize you're a success. You should not be thinking how to be successful. Very wrong way to approach life. This is for today's best life-changing videos and is filled with pure wisdom of Sadhguru. Sadhguru encourages inner engineering. He says that you must focus on changing yourself first rather than trying to change your surroundings and the people around you. If you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. What other topics from Sadhguru would you like us to cover? Tell us in the comments section. For more videos, click the video shown on the screen right now and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching.